welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is the Porsche Cayman GT4 RS. This is the Cayman we've all been waiting for, the Cayman that has been massaged by the GT department at Porsche and it finally got the basic the GT3 engine in a Cayman. We've had the GT4 before that actually uses a, a different engine. This is the first one with the full 9000 RPM GT3 engine and a whole load of other mods as you'd expect by that department. We'll go right through the suspension etc. But it's an expensive Cayman it lists at 108,370 and the example you see here is 133,549 pounds because basically it's got 11,000 pounds of Visa package, titanium roll cage and club sport package. But if you go into the classifiers just before coming up here, I checked Mobile DE, which is the big sort of German site that whole Europe sort of uses. And if you wanted to buy one of these with about 2000 kilometers on it, you'll be paying quarter of a million euros. Amazing price. Why is it worth so much? Let's go and have a closer look, see what it's all about. Now, instantly recognisable as a GT4 RS, this example. One, because it's got the deeper air pan that all GT4 RSs get, but it's also got the Weissach pack, and that gives you this carbon bonnet here with these very distinctive scoops that are actually feeding the brakes, cooling the brakes. This vent is actually for the oil cooler vents up there, and also a nice touch being an RS product. It's got the stick on Porsche logo there. It has to have a lot of air at the front because obviously it's got the wing at the back, which we'll look at in a moment. But if you come round the side, it's not just the bonnet that is carbon. These wings are carbon as well. And that has given Porsche the opportunity just to reshape this to get vent air out from these monster wheels and uh, carbon CCM brakes. And that's why that's curved there. They put some PPF tape there, as I imagine that's just Stone Chip City. So we'll have a look further down the car. It does stay Ship. that's why that bit of protection is there the brakes though ccm brakes on this example and they're actually an option which surprised me five thousand five hundred ninety seven pounds for that option there is also a magnesium wheel option but it does get the center bolt for the like gt3 look etc come on round the car lightweight door panels um, I've got my magnet out on this car and it's, this is all steel steel roof um, steel rear wing all around there Aluminium doors though, so lightweight door there. I was just talking about, wasn't I, about that stone chips. If you look down here, absolute rash of stone chips. This car has done 9,000 miles. Weirdly, no protection at all there. Now, normally um, the Cayman, it breathes through here. This is your engine intake, air, etc., and other things happening, brakes, etc. The key reason for, for me for buying a GT4 RS is the fact it has this scoop here because this is where the engine breathes from now. Rear little window is gone and that feeds directly into the engine which you'll see as we go around the back. And that changes the drive experience dramatically because all you hear this incredible induction bark because of that. Obviously there's one on the other side as well. Keep on coming around. The wing, you can't miss it. This is known as the swan neck wing. This is absolutely identical to the GT3 wing. This is the GT3 wing. And the reason for it, I explained it on the GT3, but I'll do it again, is it's the underside of the wing that does the work. You think it was the top, but no, it's the underside. And this actually keeps it cleaner, the actual surface that is, um, the wing is actually operating. You want that as clean as possible in aero. And if you're a track day junkie, you can adjust it. You have to get your screwdriver out and you can slightly alter the pitch of that. I did notice part of the lightweight pack of this is you get thinner glass at the back here, but there is actually a crack all across the screen here. Which tells you that this car's had a pretty hard life. Also on the Visac pack, you get this Porsche script along the back. It does look really good. Round the back again, stick on badge gt3 rs and then with the visac pack you get these strange huge great exhaust with a sort of titanium finished they're meant to look like the porsche 935 now under here 
very different to a normal Cayman because basically you don't see an engine at all on a Cayman, but it's sort of uncovered here because of this carbon intake. So engine sitting there, and you can see these two either side, you won't see it the other side. I'm interested, this has a little bit of tape here that tells me that it sometimes comes apart because that would be wobbling, I presume, because it's attached to the engine and it's fixed on the body here. So it probably has a little, it has a little bit of rubber seal just joining the two, a bit like the uh, Ferrari, we had in the other 296 water and oil there to connect and because it's got the Vysak pack it's got a roll cage in this car that I'm told is made of titanium can't check if it is a boot space here and obviously there's a boot space around the front so they've actually tried pretty hard to get the weight out of this car and Porsche claim it's 35 kilos lighter than a regular GT4. Um, so that's the same as all the carbon I've just pointed out and those aluminium doors. But actually at 415 kilos, DIN, so that means we're a full tank of fuel, it's the same weight as that GT3 Touring I had in. You would think it might have been lighter because it's a smaller car, the Cayman, but it's that steel construction just means the weight is not quite as light as you want, although 415 kilos in today's world is reasonably light, especially with 64 litres of fuel on board. Quick look up the front. Carbon bonnet. And yeah, you can see those ducts are then diving down here. So that's actually feeding the brakes. That's what these are leading off to and the normal black hole boot you get in the front of a Cayman. So there you go, quick whiz round this car, let's take it outside, take it for a drive. It's another one of those cars you have to be careful getting in and out of because of the bucket seats. It's, um, you, the, you get GT seats, I think they turn them as a no cost option. So let's start it up. And it's funny getting in the Cayman after having a couple of uh, GT3, you know, 992 generation 911s in. It's, it feels weirdly dated, the smaller screen here, the sort of massive dash, the buttons, um, but, and the wheel with nothing on it. You can't choose the um, you know, normal sport and race setting that you get on a uh, 992 on this generation of Cayman. And PDK only on this car no manual gearbox option unfortunately on this one for the rs doors yeah it's the they, they are lightweight doors and you've got those slightly odd sort of door handle things that you sort of you have to remember the pull from the back rather than the front i'm sure it saves a few grams but I, I suppose it's the look they want that look of the old style sort of door handles i say rs on the dash there to tell that you've got this kit which I can very much tell I've got it on the seats as well and I've got this roll cage I can see in the mirror on that cracked screen so yeah all sort of familiar I've got Peter Gay's uh, and dampers and exhaust on here and I've got nose lift on this car but yeah time to crack on go find some favorite roads although the sun's shining now it's done nothing but rain and there's wet leaves and it's really warm it's 13 degrees and this car comes as standard on uh, Michelin Cup 2 so not the best tar for these sort of conditions but anyway you'll join me later on some of my favorite bits of road so now I'm gonna press PDK Sport in here just to give you a sense what this car sounds like is I accelerate up here and more wet leaves. There you go, I was only using up, well, I didn't go over 6,000 RPM there, and it has a very distinct voice, this car, shall we say, because of this induction system. You like play tunes on it, it's a musical instrument as well as being a car that off again. It's um, it's quite a noisy car, quite noisy bit of road, 81 decibels in the cabin, but the trick, when it's all lit up, I've got an exhaust button here as well as Peter Gay Sport, and combined and close in between eight and 9,000 RPM, which you'll hear later on, we measured it in here where my head is, 116 decibels. I've never had a car anywhere near that. Um, the McLaren F1 actually has a real bark because it's got the induction carbon tube above your head. Glorious sound. I've 
never actually measured the F1 when I've been in it. I, sh I will do it. But 116 decibels. I, I looked at a decibel rating and it's, it's getting pretty close to sort of damaging. And apparently the engineers had it louder. And then someone at Porsche, I'm just going to take stop start off. Um, someone at Porsche thought we ought to tone it down a bit so that it's only 116 decibels now. But uh, yeah, quite an experience when it's all lit up. The other thing you notice is that steering is normal. After the GT3 and the nervousness and a completely different feel, this one just feels normal from the off. As I imagine, all Porsches have always felt this is it. I, I forgot to mention in the GT3 Touring uh, review that it's, obviously it's got rear steer. That isn't an option on this Cayman. And I love the simple wheel. This is just a car that goes about its business. I can change manually. If I want to, like this, I might try it, because it, it is a nice feeling, the actual shape of the gear change is a good change. Someone who knows about gear changes has designed this PDK um, gearbox controller. Funny how cosy it feels in here, I think the big difference between the Cayman and the 911 is that space behind you is just a bit more airy inside, even though I can still see right through to the rear window. I just feel much more enclosed in here, the dash is sort of higher. Look, look, it's just a visual trick, maybe the windscreen's a little lower. I don't know, but it, it feels a smaller car. Now, I'm going to pop it over to manual and I'm probably going to come down a few gears. Maybe I'll put the exhaust button and press that as well. I will come down and I'll intersect. This would be the first taste of that magic between eight and nine thousand RPM. I'm going to shut up while I do this. Really well, actually, nice damping. I'm going to keep it in 
just can't take full power in these sort of conditions. But, you know, it's time to go through some of the likes and dislikes of this car, mate. Like, starting with the dislikes, it's a very analog car, and I know they've made it for um, track day sort of usage, and that's why it's PDK only. But it sort of feels as though it should be a manual. So if this is a last way of celebrating this engine, this 9,000 RPM, 500 horsepower engine, what sort of car this would be if I could control it with a manual gearbox? I can, but I can understand. I mean, Nurburgring times, what are they? Nine, I think they've done a seven. I, I was looking it up. It's either 709 or 705. There seem to be two times for it. Not sure why. Incredibly fast, not quite as fast as GT3, interestingly, but right up there. And yeah, mentioning GT3, one of the surprises of the car is weirdly how close it's priced to a GT3. I'm surprised it wasn't actually the bigger gap. I know it's got the engine, but the Cayman sort of sits below a GT3, and yet it's priced. Well, you know, 113,000 times you pay vehicle excise duty and that sort of thing in the UK. Very close to 130 or thereabouts for a GT3. Almost academic, because you've got to get on the list to get one. Let's see what happens, but uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this car, but for me it doesn't quite appeal as much as the current GT3. You have to really want the handling, the purity, the fact that it was more mid-engine than 911, and then you will really enjoy this car. But there you go, still, in, still a sort of fantastic car, but not quite the one for me. If you have, hope you enjoyed this video, if you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming along very soon. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.